Hey y'all, Mark Backey here. Apologies in advance for the audio issues, but today's video regards what happens when the scapegoat or the black sheep leaves a narcissistic system. Now, firstly, you have to realize what an integral role the scapegoat plays in these dynamics. Um, scapegoats tend to be unaware of this because they're oftentimes made to feel insignificant, inconsequential, that the other members just barely tolerate their presence, but the scapegoat is the person who actually fuels the entire system with their emotions and their reactions to projections. Not only that, the scapegoat is the identified patient. They're the person that when things go wrong, people can pin blame on them, and that way the other members can not only continue to appear perfect, but can also appear magnanimous for tolerating such a flawed train wreck as the scapegoat. So it's a very vital role, which is why when the scapegoat leaves, it's natural for the head narcissist to want them back. Now, this isn't always the case. If the scapegoat is too intuitive or has mentioned cluster B, or if the head narcissist just feels they expend too much energy trying to manipulate this person, then they'll go right to the smear campaign. But if the scapegoat is somewhat naive, or if previous Hoover attempts proved successful, then they will try to get them back into the fold. This will be conducted by either the head narcissist themselves or someone in their harem, and the scapegoat will be love-bombed and or guilted, and they'll be made to believe that the narcissist is nice now, and how much they're missed, and how things will be different. And things will be different because they will be much worse. You see, the narcissist doesn't see you leaving and think to themselves, oh, I abused the fuck out of this person and now they're exhausted and need to go and make their mental health a priority. They don't see it that way. They see it as you abandoning them, as you denying them of your supply, of you discarding them before they could discard you. So they cannot let these perceived transgressions go unpunished, which is why things will be great for the first week or two, but after that, the abuse will ramp up. Not only that, the narcissist is just biding their time until the scapegoat's at their most vulnerable. So in their minds, they can be the one to do the discarding. This helps them maintain some semblance of control, not only over you, but also over their fragile ego. So if you have been scapegoated in a system like this, it's a very bad idea to return. Now, once the Hoover has failed, the next phase is the smear campaign. And the narcissist has been laying the groundwork down on the smear campaign for a minute. This way, when you do inevitably leave, they can tell people, see, I told you they were like this, and I told you this would happen, and they're gonna say how abusive you are, and how you're a monster behind closed doors, and how you're mentally ill. They'll likely say you're addicted to a substance or two. They'll say how relieved they are that you're gone. They'll imply how wonderful they are for tolerating such a horrible person as you. I mean, there's really no depths they won't sink to regarding the smear campaign, and it's gonna be brutal, but there's really not much you can do about it. I've discussed this in another video, so I don't wanna get into it here, but it's best not to defend yourself or explain yourself. You just keep being you, and eventually people see through it. Not only that, most people already know the narcissist is full of shit. They just go along with whatever they say so they're not the target of their ire. So I know it sucks, but it's best not to give it any oxygen. So now the Hoover has failed and you can smear to anyone who will listen. The next phase is grooming your replacement. Now. Most scapegoats tend to be empaths because we're such quality fuel source, uh, but empaths also tend to have this weird martyr complex. So this is the point where 
some empaths will be tempted to return to the system to shield the other members from the narcissist wrath or at the very least try to warn and or advise the new scapegoat but you are not responsible for other people's actions and you are certainly not responsible for other people tolerating other people's actions you're allowed to love people from a distance and sometimes to obtain the life you want you have to be a little selfish and this is definitely one of those times so don't try to reach out to the new scapegoat don't try to aid the new scapegoat you just have to let the new dynamics play out which brings me to the fourth fifth i lost count but the final phase is if they're unable to find a replacement scapegoat this is when masks start slipping it's so cliche to call it narcissist emotional vampires, but that's exactly what they are. They need other people's EAV, emotions, attention, validation, in order to function properly. And even without a scapegoat present, they still need to feed. So this is the point when all the narcissists start turning on one another and the head narcissist's true colors get exposed and it's going to be a hot mess, but... At this point, it's not your problem because you are out of the system and finding your tribe of healthy people and hopefully living your happily ever after. Now, I do hope this video was helpful. Please know if you are overcoming abuse or trauma or you're just trying to find meaning in this world, know that I am always rooting for you and I hope you have an awesome day.